Saab will build its Gripen E in Canada, if the aircraft is selected as the Royal Canadian Air Force's RCAF's, next generation fighter jet. The Gripen E is one of three options currently being considered by the Canadian government, to replace the RCAF's fleet of legacy CF-188 Hornets. Saab, supported by the Swedish government, submitted its offer of 88 aircraft, sustainment and training services in late July. The other two bids, backed by the United States government, are the Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning II and the Boeing Block III Super Hornet. If the Gripen is selected, Saab is committed to build, support, sustain, enhance and upgrade Canada's Gripen in Canada by Canadians, Mikhail Johansson, president of Saab, said on the opening day of the International Aerospace Week Forum, hosted virtually by Aero Montreal, on December 14. While assembly of the aircraft were done by IMP Aerospace, and defense at its facility in Enfield, NS, the combat mission systems would be built, and maintained at one of two new research facilities proposed for the Montreal area. As part of its industrial and technological benefits ITB package, Saab is offering to establish a Gripen Center that would provide management of the mission system program, and support research and development of enhanced capabilities for the fighter, to respond to ever-evolving threats, said Johansson. It would play a key role in sustainment of the Gripen and its associated systems, including upgrades, fleet management, repairs and modification. The center would become a focal point for the transfer of knowledge, and intellectual property IP, associated with the sensors, electronic warfare and combat systems, giving Canada greater control over its ability to meet NORAD and NATO mission requirements. That's really the important thing to being able to support, and sustain the fighter for the life of the program, added Patrick Palmer, executive vice president and head of sales and marketing in Canada, during a press briefing after the announcement. The Gripen Centre would be staffed primarily by members of a Canadian team announced in March 2020, which includes IMP, CAE, Paraton Canada and GE Aviation. But there could be additional opportunities for Canadian companies, noted Palmer. The team is, as we have defined it, but there are other elements on the team that are going to be coming forth over the next period of time. Saab has adopted a somewhat similar approach with Brazil the only current foreign customer for the Gripen E, establishing the Gripen Design and Development Network to serve as a hub for technology transfer and development of the fighters. The Brazilian Air Force took possession and flew its first F-39 aircraft in September 2020. Though the Gripen Center in Montreal would be unique to Canada, Saab will capitalize on its Brazilian experience with IP and knowledge transfer to mitigate any risks, said Palmer. Johansson also announced an aerospace research and development center, co-located with the Gripen Center, to focus on developing a rich ecosystem for research and innovation. A key component of Saab's long-term vision in Canada. The second center would collaborate with Canadian engineers, scientists, academia and governments to develop, test and produce next-generation aerospace systems and components to complement the existing aerospace industry, he explained. While R&D might overlap with some elements of the Gripen E program, the broader aim would be to spur innovation in a number of different areas that we are very interested in looking at, such as autonomous systems, capabilities to make a greener aircraft and artificial intelligence, Simon Carroll, president of Saab Canada, said during the media briefing. To do that, we are looking to engage with numerous other partners, other defense and government organizations, and university and other academia. We are looking at a really collaborative space. More important for Canadian industry, the goal would be to develop systems and components for global export. The fighter program, observed Johansson, could mean generational economic benefits for the aerospace sector. 
In all, the two centers and the work generated by the acquisition program, such as training system development by CAE, could create several thousand long-term jobs in the province. In a closing statement to the forum, Anna Hallberg, Sweden's Minister for Foreign Trade and Nordic Affairs, emphasized the similarities between Canada and Sweden, including production of NHL players. Canada is Sweden's eighth-largest export market and shares numerous R&D interests, she noted. I believe the defense sector has the potential to increase our bilateral trade and investment exchange even further. The contest is scheduled to be decided in 2022, with the first aircraft delivery projected in 2025. Up to 19 billion Canadian dollars, US 14 billion dollars, is up for grabs. Canada could downselect to two bidders in spring 2021 after an initial evaluation of proposals, though it could keep all three companies as options until the final selection of a single bidder in 2022, the Canadian government said in statement. For its proposal, Saab will partner with Canadian defence firms Imp Aerospace and Defence (CAE) and Paraton Canada, and will offer a competitive package of industrial and technological benefits, the company announced. Saab's Gripen fighter is designed to operate in harsh environments and defeat the most advanced global threats. The system meets all of Canada's specific defence requirements, offering exceptional performance and advanced technical capabilities, said Jonas Hagel, who heads Saab's aeronautics business. As a partner nation of the F-35 program, Canada has contributed funding for the development of the Joint Strike Fighter and is involved in the production of the jet. In Lockheed's statement confirming the bid, the firm said the F-35 program would support an estimated 150,000 jobs in Canada over its lifespan. Boeing's argument for its Super Hornet Block 3 was simple, the Royal Canadian Air Force already operates F-A-18s, and buying the latest version of the Super Hornet is a proven, affordable option that will allow the service to reuse existing infrastructure and reduce sustainment costs.